What's up, everyone? It's NFL Week 9, and we're taking a look at FanDuel for your FanDuel NFL Week 9. First look where we go over the entire main slate, the big one on FanDuel, and hopefully look for some bargains. Last week, we had a pretty good one with uh, Jameis Winston was the nuts call. So um, let's see if we can keep it going here with some domination on FanDuel. And the first thing I want to do is actually bid farewell to the free money contest that I've been selling, telling you guys about all season long. It looks like FanDuel has gone back to normal DFS contests where unfortunately we don't get the free money. We don't get the overlay. Um, did the math here on the NFL rush. It's 350 K in prizes. They are collecting 420,000 ish dollars for this contest. So, you know, back to overlay about 75 K on this one in just FanDuel profit, not going to you, but going to the operator. Understandable. They got to make their money, but uh, it was fun while it lasted. And for everybody who enjoyed the free money contest, at least we got half a season of it. So I'm excited. And I kind of want to reward FanDuel by continuing to throw volume at their site. So thank you FanDuel for doing that. I hope you keep doing stuff like that and we'll throw some volume at you. Just as a uh, as a nice little thank you, it's helped my bankroll go up a little bit. Um, my best finish in that one, I think, was a ninth place. I, I think I came in 18th place um, this past weekend. So I wish I did better. Wish I could have had a takedown, but we did have a DFS Army member take one down. So good enough for me, and good enough to see you guys all attacking this contest. I don't see any other fr uh, free money contest this week on Fanduel, so we are back to normal. We got to be a little bit better about the lineups we put in. That's all right. Um, you know, it's pretty good at putting lineups together. Sliders want to give him a congrats on this third place finish in the DraftKings Millie Maker, a point away from the million. Man, that that burns. But Sliders has been there before. He's not new. He's had quite a few big finishes. I'm pretty sure I'm sending the swag bag we're sending out for Sliders this time because he's got a few is uh, some special stuff like some multi-time winner swag. That's what you do in DFS Army. Keep winning contests. We keep sending you swag. That's how we do it. Um, if you want to come and check out the FS Army, of course, we are running our big promo this week. NFL 50, uh, VIP 50, not NFL 50. VIP 50 is 50% off any of the VIP packages that we have. VIP at the FS Army means it includes everything that we do. So all of the sports included in one package. It's really great. Other sites, three, four, five hundred dollars a month for a, an equivalent package. Um, but we're going for a much more reasonable. $89.99 a month, or you could check out a week of VIP using code VIP50 for just $12.50 this week. 12 bucks, the price of a of a latte, a, a soy latte. You get a week of DFS Army VIP. So we hope to see you there, dfsarmy.com. All right, let's get into NFL week nine here, and we'll take a look at the matchups real quick and kind of go through this. So I've got the domination station optimizer from DFS army loaded up on screen where you can kind of get the team totals and the game totals and all of that good stuff right on screen. So we can um, get a feel for which games to target. Um, first up, we got the Patriots at the Titans. Titans are slight favorites in this one coming off uh, a decent game there. Um, Rudolph Mason Rudolph. The team looks much better when Rudolph is the quarterback because Will Levis is terrible. Um, so let's see what happens there. If Rudolph comes back, uh, last week it was Calvin Ridley doing, uh, good things. Uh, Tony Pollard getting the full run. So there, I do have some interest in the Titans in this game on the Patriots side. we got to see if Drake may is going to play. i kind of doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, I like them better if may plays, if not Titans defense might be something of interest here. Broncos at the Ravens. Uh, that one doesn't look as competitive. It, it's interesting because the Ravens defense has been terrible. And we think of them as this great defensive team. Every now and again, they do step it up. But their past defense, they've uh, a lot of their defensive backs have been hurt. And maybe it presents a little opportunity. Like last week, we're on Bo Nix. Uh, Bo Nix was chalky, and we were all over it um, as well in that great matchup against Carolina. This is not as obvious. They're on the road. It's the it's the Ravens. It, it doesn't look as good. But we have seen teams' uh, style, including Jameis Winston last week against the Ravens. So, Ravens. So, um, anything can happen here. but. My general sense is even the 27 and a half point team total for the Ravens. I don't know. I don't know if this is the week to pay up for the Ravens offensive pieces. Um, Chargers at the Browns. Browns. What can Brown do for you? Jameis Winston at the at the head of the uh, team there 
they, they look much better on offense. Um, obviously, uh, Winston to Tillman was a core play for me last week. Had a ton of Winston. I'm surprised that actually my Winston lineup was not the one that finished in, in like that did the high finish in the uh in the in the rush here on FanDuel last week. For some reason, even though I put 14 percent of my lineups with Winston at the helm, those weren't the ones that made it. Who knows why? But um. Yeah, last week you had on the Chargers, uh, Lad McConkey uh, breakout week, but it only caught seven passes. So I think both of these teams, this game's a little more interesting than the total uh, implies. The Chargers are kind of a team that does play slow, and they do try to, they are, they tend to be in these games that are low scoring. But I don't know, this one could blow up with Winston at the helm for the Browns. So who knows? Uh, one of the sexy games of NFL Week 9, of course, is Miami at the Bills, 50-point total. Miami's a pretty big underdog. I'm surprised at that one. Those teams are generally pretty close uh, in terms of you know how they play each other. The Bills have gotten the better of this matchup more often than not, but Miami's on the upswing. They got Tua back. Whatever's been going on with Miami up until now, I think they're getting better and better. Tua back, he's going to get better each week. So um, this game, I think, is going to be closer than everything implies, and I think all of the pieces from both sides are super in play here. So we will be focusing on that game as one to target. Commanders at the Giants, 43 and a half point total. Eh, that looks okay. Jaden Daniels back. You know, um, a lot of things can happen in a game like that. We have to find out what the story is with Tyrone Tracy. The Giants are just much better when Tyrone is in there. He, I think he was concussed at the end of the Sunday or Monday night game, whatever game that was. I think it was Monday night. So I think he was concussed there, but had a great game. It looked like he took over the starting role from Singletary. Overall, the 43 and a half point total kind of to the low side. So this game's not popping, but uh, has a little bit of potential there. Individual pieces. Raiders at the Bengals. Uh, Bengals usually need a team to kind of pressure them offensively in order for the Bengals to have those smash games where, you know, Burrow throws for, gets more than 30 fantasy points and you get the 40 pointer from Jamar Chase. I don't, I don't really think this one sets up that way. Um, so, it's probably not something I want to build heavily around this week, although one-offs from either team could be all right. Um, this one's really interesting, though. Cowboys at the Falcons. 52-point total. Neither team has a great deal. I think this can go a lot. Of first of all, 52 point. I mean, at first look, I'm a little surprised at how high the game total is. Um, this one looks to be really co close. 24 and three quarters versus 27 and a quarter. So um, really close spread there. And... Last week, we broke the seal on C.D. Lamb, right? Has been doing it, has been getting it done. Where's that big game? Ah, the seal is broken as of last week. Puts up 40-plus. You needed C.D. Lamb probably to take down tournaments. I, was, was a, was a, I think that was Monday night. Uh, I think that was, yeah, that was the, um, the Sunday nighter here on FanDuel. So... You know, now we get another matchup against uh, a, a Falcons team that can be scored against, can score. This could be an offensive uh, juggernaut game. So both sides very much of interest and very much in play here. Saints looking to get back Derek Carr this week, and they are heavy favorites taking on the Panthers who may still like think they have some. You know, Bryce Young looked better last week. I can't take it away from the kid. He looked better last week. So they're probably going to keep doing the Bryce Young thing. I don't know how the, well that's going to work out. Saints defense should be really popular <laughs> this week. And I think Kamara's of interest here. A anytime a team is facing the Panthers, you got to just play their offense. Like the Panthers don't play defense at all. So that has been a winning formula. Chicago at Arizona, even uh, pick them, pick them game, 44 and a half point total. You know, there's some areas here that this game could produce, um, you know, Chicago, a little bit disappointing. Obviously, a disastrous finish for them last week with the Hail Mary. Uh, Jaden Daniels comes out ahead in the battle of the rookies there. Chicago's still a pretty good defensive team. Um, taking on a Cardinals team that's been, you know, finagling their way into wins. Close game. So I see a close one here. I'm not sure that that is one I want to initially target heavily. Jaguars at the Eagles, Eagles defense, another popular play this week. Jaguars lost a lot of their wide receiver talent. I feel like um, everybody's getting hurt over there. Uh, Christian Kirk is out. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. was banged up the last I saw of day to day. 
Uh, even Gabriel Davis day to day. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, Travis Etienne didn't play last week. So they're, they've got some injuries on offense that need to be sorted through this week. I think the Eagles are good as they always are. It's an easy team, a, you know, poor defensive matchup. Uh, but it could be a Saquon Barkley week once again, where Saquon comes in and takes all the goodness. Rams at Seattle. This one has a little bit of pop uh, potential as well. I like this Rams team. Uh, you know, they're back to full strength with Puka and Cup and, and Kyron all doing their thing. So um, I definitely like that game in that situation. The, uh, the Seahawks are going to need DK Metcalf back for this game in order to compete. And obviously, um, when the Seahawks are playing it close, Kenny Walker is usually a huge part of that. Last week, we saw when they're behind huge, Kenny Walker is no longer a big part of it. So buyer beware on that one. But I think this game should play close uh, with Seattle being at home. So uh, and bouncing back from kind of the beating they took last week. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, a couple more games left. Uh, the, the, the night game is the one that I really need to get into. But... Uh, you've got the Lions at the Packers. Packers coming in. Um, Jordan Love may or may not play. Don't know. I would. Uh, I. It's not clear right now. He got knocked out on the last game. I'm not sure if it's a concussion. We'll, we'll take a look. I can't remember right now. But Jordan Love got knocked out, and we we have to find out if he's going to play this week. If he's not, you'll get Malik Willis season. It's not that good of a season. And then um, on the Lions side, uh, obviously Jameson Williams. By the way, I got concerns about Jameson Williams, major concerns about his character. But at the same time, take drugs, gambling, like he's kind of my spirit animal. But uh, with that being said, you know, no JMO, no big deal. Um, the lines are always difficult to pick which guy is going to go off, though. There's so many studs on that team. Last week it was uh, Gibbs went, went bananas. It could be anyone. I think uh, Laporta finally scored a touchdown, but he hasn't been anything special this year. So tough to rely on that one and certainly tough to rely on the Packers without knowing the quarterback situation. So we'll skip it for now. And finally, in big news, the Colts have benched Anthony Richardson in favor of Joe Flacco. Now, you know, I love me some Flacco. Flacco gets in there. He just wants to sling it. He doesn't care. He, de he doesn't give a fuck. He just wants to sling it. And I like that. Uh, Flacco to downs should be popular here. So I think this game could be super competitive on both sides. Like, I think the Colts can score a little bit here. And I think the, the Vikings will have to answer. So I could see plenty of fantasy goodness coming from both sides of this game. From Jefferson to Aaron Jones underpriced. Oh, Aaron Jones, great matchup against the Colts. And then, of course, Jonathan Taylor looked pretty good last week. You got Flacco back in there throwing it, slinging it to Josh Downs. Lots to like in this one. All right, let's shift gears and open up the FanDuel application and start going position by position. We'll put a little pre, uh, they call this the value lineup, the early lineup, kind of the, the players that pop the most in my mind without necessarily using the projections. Just who thinks, who seems like they're underpriced? Who seems like a great deal for NFL week nine? And let me know who you think is a good deal. Who are you starting your lineup with this week in terms of quarterbacks? And, and wide receiver, uh, you know, quarterback wide receiver stack. Is there a running back that really pops for you that's a great value? Let me know the val your top value running back and quarterback on the slate in the comments. Um, of course, while you're doing that, if you don't mind to hit that subscribe button, if you're not subscribed to the F's Army channel here, uh, let us know you're out there and hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get into it. Starting at the top, we've got Jalen Hurts. 9,300, a little spendy there for that situation. And like I said, I kind of think this is a Saquon game, so I'm not sure I'm going to spend all the way up for Hurts. Um, Josh Allen, 9K, don't mind it. Don't mind it at all against Miami. I think um, Allen gets it done a lot of different ways. Miami is good cornerback play, but it, the, the the Bills negate that because they have three wide receivers that are kind of 1A, 1B, 1C right now. So it's hard to hone in on any one of them. And even if you have good cornerbacks, it's not going to help. And of course they have Kincaid. It, uh, the bills are really balanced right now. I, I like uh, Josh Allen in this one. Lamar Jackson, 8,900. He has been spectacular this season, putting up big numbers week after week. Um, can't really ignore it. I mean, he, he, he's got one game under 20 fantasy points. 9, 18, 27, 36. I mean, he kind of, we were trying to get those high 20s out of him, but he's been doing it. He's averaging 27. That's 3X this salary already. So it's pretty crazy, but he has been spectacular this year. Um, I'm not sure that this, again, this looks like the game where that might end. 
Jaden Daniels, fine against the Giants. 8,700, a little too expensive for his average fantasy points, but whatever. Jordan Love, it's a groin. I don't know. Does it bode well? I don't know. Here's Dak at 8K, and I'm interested here. Uh, you know, I don't love it. He's a little priced up. He's not doing that well this year, but I think the seal might have been broken a little bit, uh, at least for CD Lamb. But this is a much better matchup for Dak. You know what's interesting? Lamb puts up 40 DraftKings points, no less, but Dak still didn't have that good of a day. And it's a reminder that in, in correlating wide receivers and quarterbacks, there's a much greater correlation to the WR2 slash WR3 with their quarterback than the WR1. That comes up in every metric, every time we back test, every time we look back and produce the actual figures, the WR2 or WR3 are more correlated to the quarterback because the WR1's, you know, he's doing well either way. So when we do these stacks, always keep that in mind that when you're stacking up Dak, it might be better to stack him with, uh, obviously we want Lamb in there, but you got to get the second guy in there. Is it Ferguson? Is it Tolbert? Is it somebody else? Don't know, but you got to get the second guy in there for it to work. Joe Burrow, um, 7,900 against the Raiders. This spot doesn't really stand out for me. It's not something I'm super excited by. And Burrow's the definition of GPP only. A couple of big games, but the rest are just these 17, 16s, and 18s. Um, Kyler Murray's been fine this season. Nothing to break the slate over mo mo more often than not, but he hasn't put up any real duds so far. 7,700, just a height for me. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold here in this spot might not be bad um, against the Colts. You just want to play players against the Colts, so I'm cool with that. Um, Kirk Cousins hasn't had – he's had a couple of big games. There, there it is. Uh, this past week, smash. I don't even know who he was throwing to because it definitely wasn't Drake London. Darnell Mooney did okay, but really well, threw for, did he get a rushing touchdown? Where, where, four touchdowns, huh? Probably throwing it to the running backs or something. I don't think, uh, I, I could, I think Cousins is very playable here at 7,500. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Lawrence is a no. Gino is a no. Gino. We can play Tua again. Um, Tua is going to do well if his running backs don't do well. You know, it's, it's just like that. That's kind of what it is. So, I think Tua is playable at 7,300, but nothing I'm super excited about. Certainly doesn't have a lot of big games, but 7, 14, 21, 28. We're still in the – think about those more expensive quarterbacks, the Josh Allens, the 9K guys. Those guys need 27 fantasy points to 3X their salary. Tua needs to get to about 21. Now, for a 4X, you're looking at a 35, 36 from – from from Allen or Lamar. And if you think about it, yeah, they're not hitting that number, but once every four or five times, which is how it should be for that super elite um, quarterback performance. Tua, yeah, Tua probably also isn't getting you 28 other than once every four or five times. So all in a similar category. We're going to see if anybody else pops up as a good value here. Um, Caleb Williams, I think we could go back to that after the dud last week. You know, tournament probably play only, but... He has multiple games here with those with those high 20 point numbers. Uh, you know, we're looking for a 20, anything north of 25 for at 7K would be spectacular. He's done it twice already. So he's done it two out of four. So he's doing it about once every four games. Uh, but he's also improving slowly as a player, which I think will lead to more of those. Bo Nix, another one. Uh, a was a great play last week. We were all over it. I think we go back to it here potentially. This week, I know it's Baltimore, but Baltimore has been a team that you could throw on, and Nix is really cheap, and he does run the football. So this could be this could backfire massively, or it could be a really, really good play. I think the leverage you get from paying all the way down a quarterback, I say this every week, the leverage that you get when it works is so good, it's almost difficult to not win with those lineups. So... There's so much more value in picking a cheaper quarterback that pops off. So Bo Nix is in the mix. Bo Nix in the mix. Justin Herbert is a no. Jameis Winston is playable here. Back at home. Smash game last week as well. 7K. Look at all the passing attempts. 41, 300 plus yards. 
Uh, Winston's out there just slinging it. He's getting crazy. He's like, I'm getting crazy. Don't you know I'm loco? Doing the deep breathing exercise before the guy. I love Jameis Winston, man. He's definitely one of my favorite players. And I'll be playing him this week for sure. And finally, um, extreme value down here with Joe Flacco and the Colts. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Flacco, every time he seems to play, puts up a decent number. He had that good game against uh, Jacksonville, even against Pittsburgh and Tennessee, who are kind of slower paced, decent offenses. He got the 15s. That's a 2x. Uh, got you a 4x, his salary plus here against Jacksonville. And the one negative is I do think the Vikings have a very good defense. But on the flip side, it's in a dome. And Flacco is a savvy veteran where I think the savvy defensive stylings of the Vikings might work less good against him than they do against other people. Um, honorable mention, Malik Willis? Nah. Mason Rudolph? Nah. Rudolph, though, he had a good week last week, but I, I can't bring myself to do it. Gardner Minch? No. Bryce Young? No. Look at all these turdly quarterbacks who are playing on the slate. So, to get us started, should we go right back to it? Little Jameis? little jammo to start us off. I don't mind it. Um, they're at home. Why not? Not much of a run game there. I don't mind though. Uh, there's a number. It could be Jameis. I'm cool with Bo Nix, Caleb, Tua, all very sort of viable. Sam Darnold on the flip side of that game like that too. So plenty of options in the sub 8K group here on FanDuel NFL week nine. All right, let's take a look at the running backs. And there's a whole pile of great values um, available this week. A lot of them in the 7K range, some 6K guys. But, of course, the very, very top, uh, Saquon. I think Saquon's in a great spot. 9400 is a little bit expensive to pay for any kind of running back. But he's certainly in a great spot, and I like the situation for him. I like Kyron as well um, at, uh, at this price point. And not at this price point, but in general as a player, he has been super consistent with that 18 to 20 fantasy points per week. I mean, look at the consistency of it. 30, 18, 18, 19, 20. I mean, he's just putting up that number. Uh, but unfortunately, 9, 18, 27. He needs at least 27 at that price to uh, bring you FanDuel value and ideally 30 plus. He can get there, but it's not something I would expect. Same thing for Kamara. He's more of a guy I like to play on FanDuel, on DraftKings, where the PPR points you get from him are more advantageous. Got Jameer Gibbs here. It's okay. Bijan is fine. At 8,500. I think Taylor could smash here this week with Flacco. I think that helps him. Don't mind that. Kenny Walker's okay. Um, James Cook uh, at home against Miami. Cook had a monster game. Burns, shout out to Burns for putting me on Cook last week in tournament tactics. That was like the last uh, piece of the pie to get off the Brees Hall chalk and get off the, the crazy J.K. Dobbins chalk. What the hell was that? Got some James Cook in there instead. Um, the first name, though, I'm going to plug into this lineup uh, for the starting point here is uh, Devon HN, 7,800. He's a little... Um, I, I probably like him a little bit more on DraftKings, the full PPR, but I love his involvement in the passing game for this team. He just gets so many yards. Take a look at last week. Only 10 rushing attempts. You're like, ah, no big deal. But eight targets, six receptions, another 50 yards, and a touchdown. It makes all the difference. Connor here at Arizona is okay. Brian Robinson Jr. at, at the Giants is okay. But the next name that I want to plug into my lineup, and we've got a few here that really, really pop. But next name I want to pop into the lineup here is Aaron Jones, a Aaron. Okay. Um, he's not he's coming off a bit of a dud game, but he got all the he got all the work we needed. 19 carries, two targets in that one. And now he's up against the Colts. The Colts are just not a good defense. They allow tons of rushing yards. So I could see Aaron Jones um, kind of going off in this one. I don't mind Tony Pollard. Uh, you know, Tony Pollard finally as a favorite. You know, he's been an underdog in these games when he turns it up. But as a favorite, I think we could feel pretty comfortable that he's going to get us 15-plus uh, fantasy points. And I'll go for that. For 7K, if he can get a touchdown, we're probably looking at a solid 3X. Another name that's good is DeAndre Swift and J.K. Dobbins. All these guys are good. Swift is good. 20-plus uh, touches last week. Fine by me. Right? He's getting 20s. 
Um, J.K. Dobbins didn't like the chalk last week, a little too expensive, a little too crazy, but the price has come down significantly here, and all the volume remains for Dobbins, and he's got a good matchup against uh, the Browns. So I'm fine with Swift. Do which one should we plug in? We got to plug one in. Oh, let's go Swift. I wish it was favorite. I prefer heavy favorites, but you know, I'm going to plug in Swift for now, but let's scroll down, see if we can find an even cheaper running back that we feel acceptable about. So Chuba is probably a no. Ramondre is probably a no. Tank Bigsby is okay, but nothing I'm excited about. I played some Mostert last week. That worked out pretty nice, but you know, he's doing what he does. Yeah, two touchdowns, but he will need those touchdowns in order to uh, produce value. A couple names. I, I mean, there are some names down here that are going to be popular slash playable. So if, if Tyrone Tracy comes back and comes out of the concussion, then I'm interested. If not, I think Devin Singletary can go right back to it, starting running back at home for 6,100. I'm okay with that. Uh, Rico Dowdle should be back in, in full health this week. Again, part of a game that we're excited about. So I don't mind some Rico at 6K. And I don't love Javante here. I think he's going to be a little too chalky. But Javante Williams, I guess, at 6K if we're really desperate for that value. Yeah, that's going to do it for the running back position NFL Week 9. Let me know who your favorites are. Which running back trio? Now, you know you always got to use three running backs on FanDuel. What running back trio are you going to use in Week 9? Let me know in the comments, guys. Put me on the right right running backs, and then and then and then you come back next week if I didn't mention them, and tell me about it. You know, like, hey, I told you, right? Give me the I told you so's. I want them. Throw them at me. I love your I told you so's. Plus, a lot of times, you guys, but when you put a comment in there, give me a reason, convince me, and maybe I'll play that guy too. Maybe I'll get on someone that I wasn't thinking about. It happens all the time. You guys are awesome. I love the comment, especially on the live streams. If you got the the ones. Uh, especially those of you who are who are live for tournament tactics and are showdown breakdowns. Not not to mention being hilarious, but you guys crush it with really good ideas in the comments and very often names of players I, I wasn't thinking about. Oh, I don't think of that. And then I'm on it. Sure, I appreciate it. All right, let's take a look at defense. We'll start from the bottom, work our way up, and see if we can find a cheapest viable defense for NFL week nine. And um, the Raiders, no. Panthers, no. Dolphins, no. Giants, no. Colts, no. Packers, no. Jaguars, no. No, no, no. Broncos, Bronc knows. Wait, I just did something and I messed up my sort. The Bronc knows. Cowboys, no. Lions, maybe. So I'll be interested in the Lions if Jordan Love doesn't play, but it's a little too early in the week to make those guesses. So I'm going to pass on that. Find it, it's you know cheapest viable is not that easy right now. Maybe the Panthers just because. Scrolling back up, Rams no Washington maybe against the Giants. Right, Giants are terrible. Um, Daniel Jones sucks, but I feel like Daniel Jones is good against one team and one team only, and I think that's Washington. So gives me reason for pause. Maybe Giants defense, but. They do get a lot of sacks. They're, I think they're one of the having some of the most sacks in the league. Um, Patriots, maybe, I guess, if Will Levis was playing. Bengals, maybe. Browns, no. Chargers, no. Bills, no. Chicago, no. Philly, 4,500. You know what? I'm punting it. So let's just get, let's just say, let's just call it out. The Saints are going to be the best defense, I think. This week, followed by maybe Tennessee. But if we're we don't want to pay 5k for a defense, that's that's a ton of money, especially if they fail. That destroys your lineup. So for now, I'm just gonna punt the defense spot here. I'm gonna throw the Panthers in there. Cheapest man, I hate it. It's sickening. I almost can't stomach it. It's making me sick. It's making me feel bad. But YOLO, let's throw the Panthers in there. It's the cheap defense. Don't care. But realistically. We're probably going to want to pay. We're probably going to want to pay up this week. So I just don't feel like stomaching it right now. All right. Tight end position, NFL week nine. And let's start at the top here. Brock Bauer, 7,700. Okay. It's been pretty good this year. It's a little expensive. 
Um, Njoku 7K, also a little expensive. Don't mind it, though, with Jameis. Wouldn't mind pairing them up. Um, McBride coming off a good week last week, finally. Finally had that big week. 19 fantasy points, okay. Ferguson, I like him, and I like this game, and I like this matchup. I like everything about it. Um, didn't use a ton of Ferguson last week. Actually, they did. He just didn't didn't produce a good score. But I could click the Fergie button right here and be really comfortable with it. I like that game. I like that matchup. Of course, Njoku, again, fits better with JMO. So that's fine as well. Let's see if there's any uh, better deals here. Uh, Evan Ingram might be heavily needed with all those players hurt for Jacksonville. So he's going to be interesting. Uh, Kincaid playable. Tucker Craft is fine. Pitts has been doing really, really well. I'm going to plug in TJ Hawkinson coming off the injury. He's finally ready to play. Um, you know, we did see some players coming back off the, we've got to see if they're going to ease him back in all of that, how that goes. But at 5,600, it suits the lineup approach. I love this game. I'm excited to finally play Hawkinson. So I say, let's slide him in here for now. If we got to go a different way, we can, but we saved a ton of salary here as well. So kind of the cheapest viable and let's see what we could do at wide receiver and we'll, we'll plug in at the end. All right. So again, starting at the very top of the wide receiver group, Jamar chase, you know, not, not necessarily the spot where I'm looking to target chase, but it's all right. Um, Justin Jefferson, always good. I love Justin. I love me some JJ playable here. CD lamb playable. We're going to want to get kind of one of these guys in our lineup. I think this week, one of Jefferson or lamb is, uh, it's just something I want in my lineup. So, uh, I'm going to definitely be keeping these guys in mind. Let's see if we could squeeze one of them in there. Which one do we want to go with? Going to want to go with broken seal or Justin Jefferson. Either way, we already got Aaron Jones in here. So we'll go with CD lamb on this one. I'm kind of starting to feel a DAC lineup here, but I can't do it. Not on the first look. Tyreek Hill priced up appropriately finally this week. On FanDuel, DraftKings left him priced down. So interesting. Um, Malik Neighbors fine. Cooper Cup and Puka. I prefer um, Puka. I don't think they both should be this expensive. I don't think they should be that expensive at all. Drake London priced up. Devontae priced up. Uh, everybody's getting priced up here. We got to find those bargains. Olave coming off a good game. I always like Josh Downs whenever Flacco is, is starting, but he even had a good game last week with Richardson. But these are the Flacco starts, 12 targets, 9-9. Nine, nine. He was a beast with Flacco. Um, so I really like Josh Downs. Let's see. Darnell Mooney. Deontay Johnson making his uh, debut with Baltimore. Could be interesting. Uh, you know, we had Ladd McConkey as a chalky play last week. He smashed. This can work again. Although I will point out that McConkey only got his usual five or six targets, like six targets he got, and he's gotten seven, eight, six, seven, six. He's pretty consistent with these targets. And more often than not, he's kind of putting up a dud. So um, if he's going to be high owned, I wouldn't necessarily be excited to chase it. I do like the comeback, though, of this Winston and McConkey possibility. Jacoby Myers is somebody that I like a lot as well. Just um, more of a PPR FanDuel uh, DraftKings guy, but certainly getting targeted. Let's see. Yeah, he put up a 14 last week, 6, 12, 18, almost there. Ridley, um, what did he get, like 15 targets? It was crazy. Yeah, 15 targets, 10 receptions, 143 yards. The Titans, you know, if they are going to roll out Mason Rudolph, Okay, I'll take the Riddler. Cedric Tillman, though. Smash game last week with Jameis Winston. I feel like we're playing week eight again. Tillman. But if we do play that approach, again, we could finish it out with McConkey and have a really nice little... So I'm just going to show a different, a few different versions of how to build a lineup right now, right? This is a nice one, though. I'll, 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 I'll roll with it. Now, let's get that on screen. So we got Jameis Winston with Cedric Tillman, one person stack. Bring back in the same game of Lad McConkey. Not bad. Um, there are so many other ways to build this though. I can switch this out for Dobbins as well. 
and sort of build around that game with J.K. Dobbins in there. We could do a lot of different things with this exact setup. We punted the defense. We're going to need to find salary to get a proper defense. We punted the tight end for TJ Hawkinson as well. And then just threw stud CD Lamb in here and some studly running back action. Um, so who's missing? First, it's it's really easy to swap out Jameson Williams for any one of these other cheaper quarterbacks, even Bo Nix, but going up to Kirk Cousins could be interesting. Sam Darnold could be very interesting. And of course, Dak Prescott up here. So a lot of different ways to potentially build an NFL week nine here on, on FanDuel. But I like this Winston approach. Uh, we punted the defense here. Of course, as the week rolls on, I'm sure we'll discover some, some bargains, some injury uh, replacements and all that good stuff. So make sure to stay tuned here on DFS Army YouTube channel as we uh, bring you more content focused on this week of daily fantasy football showdown breakdown on Wednesday. Of course, we've got the uh, tournament tactics show with Burns, Bobby Wow, and Josiah on Fridays, where really I get that's that's where I'm finally getting my sort of plan for the slate truly together and then on saturdays for dfs army subscribers the players club where we sit down and we build lineups together on a live stream drinking blue moons building lineups together for multipliers and single entry contests that are correlated that are wisely put together and designed for single entry contests so we learn how to craft beautiful lineups on the players club on saturday so make sure to check that out as well if you're not signed up at dfs army again promo code vip50 it's 50 percent off we added weekly to the mix so you can test this out for people ask me got a trial do vip50 do one week of vip try it out make sure to join the discord don't join without joining the discord so you join the site and then you link your account to our discord because our discord is the heart and soul of dfs army it's where everything happens all the magic all the last second stuff or uh, NBA, we've got a full news and notes channel where we just monitor late breaking news and find out, hey, this guy's out, who's going to play, who's getting the minutes, all that is done in our Discord, so make sure to check that out as well, and of course, I appreciate you all for watching, if you don't mind, and if you would like to be kind, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button on the video, and we will see you next time, take care everybody.